Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the protector of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? Mine enemies that trouble me have themselves been weakened and have fallen. Words taken from the introit for this Mass, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In times like these, when there are so many strange dialectical and diabolical things going on all around us, things that disorient even those of stable heart and mind, in times like these, we need a sense of humor to keep our wits about us. And let us first note that by a sense of humor, we mean the ability to see through things and even beyond things to a deeper reality or even a future reality. Such a sense of humor can make us laugh in a wholesome way, a confident way, an assured way, even at the most gravest difficulties. It's not frivolous joking, a sense of humor, a good sense of humor. It's not silliness or smug smiling. Now think about it, in the gospel, we do not hear of his majesty laughing even once. Those modern pictures of the laughing Jesus are not pious. They are not right. That is not our Lord. Yet to be around him was a joyful experience. Our Lady at Fatima never smiled, not even once. Saint Pius X is said to have never smiled after he was made Pope. Yet to be around them was a joyful experience. Those who saw Our Lady, little children of Fatima, St. Bernadette, they gained a sense of humor because they were able to see through things to another reality, a deeper reality, a spiritual reality. This enabled them to endure every trial that came upon them. And what is more, they easily laughed at themselves and their own littleness and weakness. Nothing got them down, not even their own weakness. Think of St. Stephen being stoned to death by the raging Pharisees. He was smiling and composed, laughing as it were. How is this possible? He saw beyond their short-lived evil to see his majesty in the eternity of heaven. Thus we hear in the Acts. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looking up steadfastly to heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And then they stoned him. The same happened to many of the saints, such as St. Lawrence, roasting away on the gridiron, asking to be turned over and inviting his persecutors to partake of the burned hamburger of his flesh. St. Thomas More was lighthearted and laughing as he died on the scaffold. The various Roman martyrs whom Nero put to death this time of year, way back at the beginning of the church, they all kept smiling and laughing as they were dying cruel deaths. And Nero was enraged. He couldn't figure out how this was possible. The 16 Carmelite martyrs of Compiègne chanted hymns and psalms all the way until the very last one died on the scaffold in the French Revolution to put an end to the reign of terror. How we need this sense of humor as well. We read about some saints being given this gift even, such as the 19th century mystic Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora. She is the one who bilocated twice, I've mentioned her before, she bilocated twice to save Pope Pius VII from revolutionary men who had infiltrated the Vatican. 
Here is what we read from her biographer. His majesty spoke to her, have confidence in me. I promise you as your God that you shall gain the victory. At these words, he furnished her with the holy arms, armaments necessary to fight against hell. He communicated to her the gifts of strength and intelligence so that she might surmount all her torments and laugh to scorn all the artifices of the malicious spirits. There it is. It's one of the armaments of God, the ability to laugh, even to scorn the silliness of the devil. Second Psalm of King David reads thus, why have the Gentiles raged and they're raging now? And the people devised vain things. They're devising vain things now. The kings of the earth stood up and the princes met together. And against the Lord and against his Christ. In other words, against the church. And what does it say in this next line? He that dwelleth in heaven shall laugh at them. And the Lord shall deride them. St. Albert the Great treats of this sense of humor, this ability to laugh at evil in his commentary on the Proverbs chapter 31. That chapter is about the valiant woman, which is the church, but also Our Lady. Commenting on the line, and she shall laugh in the latter day. She shall laugh in the latter day. He first notes how the laughter of this valiant woman is the swelling in the joy of her heart, the jubilation of her mind, and a certain propriety and grace of the joviality of her mind that accompanies her laugh on her lips, but one that is not immoderate. That is, this is nothing other than the full joy of which the Lord says in St. Matthew's gospel, well done, good and faithful servant, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. So it's a heavenly joy, a heavenly laughter. St. Albert goes on, considers the causes of her laughing. He says, on her part, she laughs for four reasons. First, is that the capacity of her nature is wholly filled with joy. So that she who was once empty now has reason to rejoice. Fullness, completeness, beauty, all the parts are in place and she is filled with joy. Number two, the second is because all her merits will be repaid. She will be repaid. The more we suffer, the more we can laugh. Because when you suffer, you get paid more. Number three, the third is that because she will then have all that she could hope for, she accepts the delay that afflicts her soul in view of the reward of her patient endurance of the suspension and delay. So she endures the trial knowing it will happen. She has a sense of humor. She sees all the suffering, but she sees what's beyond and endures the suffering for the goal. There it is. And number four, the fourth is that the reward will exceed, will exceed all that her faith, hope, and charity can comprehend. St. Albert. Thus we heard in the lesson today, brethren, I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to come. Now, in view of the present circumstances, the chance for meriting is very high, meaning more and richer future laughing is available. It can be ours. Let's not get caught up in just the moment and think it's all, it's all over with. Oh no, we have to have that confident laugh. It's there if you want it. Again, St. Albert, on part of the saints, there are also four causes for laughing of which the first and principal one is that the saints will dwell as one and be in heart and soul united in enjoying God together. The world is trying to divide us. It's part of the sorrow. It's entered into the church herself. And we have cardinal against cardinal and bishop against bishop and parishioner against parishioner and so on. 
great divisions in the church today. This will end, and the joy of union will be there, and we'll laugh. Number two, the second cause is the common possession of every good that belongs to each individual. It belongs to each individual, and it is the most perfect charity that which makes all individual goods common. Thus, whatever good any individual person possesses will be possessed by all. So mutual self-giving, complete self-giving brings complete joy. And in heaven, everybody gives all. Listen to St. Catherine of Siena. She says, When the soul arrives at eternal life, all participate in the good of that soul. And the soul participates in their good. They have an exaltation, a mirthfulness, a jubilee, a joyousness in themselves, which is refreshed by the knowledge that they have found in that soul. So there's a complete mutual self-giving. Number three, a third cause for laughing is the mutual shared affection of the community and the friendship of heaven. The joy of being in a company in which we all are together at every possible level to the very fiber of our being. Number four, the fourth cause is the perpetual splendor of this society in which the Lord says in Matthew that then shall the just shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Thank you, St. Albert. How important it is for us to stick together, dearly beloved and remain united in this crisis, come what may, and we will laugh together. But there is no laughing in hell. Thus, St. Albert adds these sobering words. He says, it is very important to notice that this valiant woman not only laughs with joy over what the saints laugh over, but also laughs at those whom she here warns. She warns, but are unwilling to hear her voice. As it says in Proverbs chapter one, because I called and you refused, I stretched out my hand and there was none that regarded. You have despised all my counsel and have neglected my reprehensions. I also will laugh in your destruction and will mock when sudden calamity shall fall on you and destruction as a tempest, when tribulation and distress shall come upon you, then shall they call upon me and I will not hear. They shall rise in the morning and shall not find me. In quote, Proverbs chapter one. St. Albert notes, those things which lead to this condemnation, what are they? The first is their contempt in words of her call. Their contempt, the call of the Lord through his church. The second is their contempt of her helping hand. The third is their contempt of their counseling in conversation against her. The fourth is the diversity of destroying punishment, rushing down on them like a sudden tempest that is raised by the wind of the anger of God through the ministry of demons. Hmm. This ministry of demons, what's this? Returning to Blessed Elizabeth, she also told this about the, these malicious men of our modern times who refuse the valiant woman's help and deny her place in the world. All these men are working to get rid of one thing, the church, whatever it takes. They're going to unite to get rid of the church, the most hateful thing in the world. Make no mistake, that's what it's about. Here's what she says, Blessed Elizabeth, revealed by God. God will laugh at their malice and with a mere wave of his almighty right hand, he will punish the wicked. The powers of darkness will be allowed to leave hell and enormous crowds of devils will invade the whole world. And I believe she's speaking now of the three days of darkness. They will wreak great destruction and thus execute the orders of divine justice of which they are also subjected. They will chastise 
man's goods, his families, his towns, wretched cities, palaces, houses, and everything else that exists on the face of the earth to the exact degree that God decrees. God will allow wicked men to be cruelly chastised by fierce demons because they voluntarily subjected themselves to the devil and joined in his attack of the Holy Catholic Church, the valiant woman. I saw the horrible prison hell. There I saw the devils that would be released on earth to carry their wicked destruction everywhere. They will decimate every place that idolatry was practiced to such an extent that no trace of them will remain. Blessed Elizabeth Canori Mora. These are all approved by the church. The valiant woman will have the last laugh. These efforts of the devil and all his minions are short-lived and will fail. We need to have a sense of humor. In keeping our wits about us at this time, I'm reminded of a sort of documentary we watched in high school about the dangers of cults, cults, C-U-L-T-S, which were becoming somewhat popular in the 1970s and 80s. A man infiltrated a cult in the movie, and one of the ways he used to avoid falling under the brainwashing was to twist and mock their phrases out loud at times and to himself, because that's how they did it. They're constantly pumping you full of these ideas and these phraseology and these little catchy words, and pretty soon you're carried away with it all. They were brainwashed. He kept himself free of it by mocking them. Seems to me we have a lot of communistic-like phrases and techniques being used on us now, constantly. Be smart. Stay six feet apart. Come on. We're getting it all the time. Constantly shove down our throats these little phrases, little catchy things to brainwash us and put us in fear. Wake up, folks. These little catchy phrases and mottos are all trying to make us go along with a smiley face communism that's among us and is starting to take over. Now, to keep our sense of humor at times like this, I propose to you the thing that's necessary is to laugh, to laugh at these things, to see through them, to go higher, to go deeper. This will end. This will be destroyed. All of this. Black Lives Matter. Another one of these phrases. Really? Black Lives Matter? Everybody's lives matter. Oh, you're in prison for saying that. In remaining united to the valiant woman who sees through all, even unto the last days, we have what it takes, folks. We have what it takes, dearly beloved, to see beyond all that is happening to us now, whether it be our trials, our personal sorrows, the losses, or those affecting and afflicting the church, our city, our country, and the world. We have what it takes to look beyond. Keep your sense of humor with her, the valiant woman. Laugh at these short-lived attempts of evil. And never forget, brethren, let us reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.